from, from these, these uh, core drivers, this is what we've touched, cloud applications, increased demand for video encrypted applications, the three things that are causing this disruption in hybrid apps and hybrid WANs and SD-WANs in the first place. Now we're going to move towards the last part of our agenda, and we want to give you a view into what we're building and what's going to be coming out next year in terms of new platforms. So again, um, this is a first for us in terms of notifying this to a public audience, and we're uh, very grateful for the opportunity. So word on platforms. It might not be surprising that when we start talking about platforms, the first thing we think about is the application. Uh, we think about applications at the branch, at the edge of the, of the distributed enterprise. And there are three types. There's applications that are running on premises in a data center and sent over a WAN consumed by the branch. There's applications that are increasingly running in the cloud and consumed by the branch over a wide area network. There's also a third class of application that runs locally in the branch, running on servers and storage. And some branch locations may have been 100% centralized where they don't have any more servers and storage and backup anymore. And other branches do. You can think of things like supply chain management at manufacturing plants or point of sale, um, uh, exploration, oil refinery, data gathering. These are things that need infrastructure, but they're not sitting in a data center. And it represents pain for IT to manage and deploy all these in a very agile and secure way. Earlier this year, we updated one of our uh, product lines, the Steel Fusion product line with 4.0. It was a complete redesign of the hardware and the software, a truly hyper-converged appliance that is purpose-built for the branch. And what's unique about this solution is that there's no other uh, um, offering on the market today that allows you to take data that exists in the branch today bring it into the data center where it can be managed securely without compromising any amount of performance or availability at the branch. That's a technology that we call Blockstream, and it helps you extend storage in a data center over long distance with local performance. The other innovation that is core to this solution is the ability to create virtual machines in your data center that are using storage in your data center and have those virtual machines instantly boot across a wide area network as quickly as they would be running locally if they were running on local servers. So you put these two things together and now all of a sudden the experience of managing branch IT for those sorts of local applications is much like your, your phone. Um, if you want to deploy a new application on a phone, it's as easy as dialing up the app store and downloading it. In the case of dis real distributed enterprises, it's as easy as creating a virtual machine in the data center with all the tools that you have, push a button, and that virtual machine can boot and run uh, thousands of miles away without actually having the data have to follow, follow with it. And all that data is central. It's a very interesting concept. Um, the, the, we also updated the, our Steelhead product line earlier this year. So this was finishing off the, C, the CX70 series, and there were two key things that we did with this. One was, was that for the first time, we put enough horsepower into these boxes so that 100% of the specified connections could be supported on that box even if they are using SSL, these heavier weight connection types. This was a first for us, and again, in the spirit of fully embracing SSL and HTTPS as the new real TCP. The second one was around network services capacity. So as we built out new uh, services around DPI, applic application classification, uh, network QoS, path selection, etc., secure transport, that also needed additional horsepower. And we added a specification on that box where there's up to five times more capacity to service these types of services in addition to what's existed with WAN optimization. So, this brings us to what's next, and I put up this, uh, this bold slide earlier, and maybe it's not so bold because this is truly what the market is going through with this SD-WAN. It's not a router. What, what are we going to be building? What's this next platform? Um, we, like these, we like these phone analogies, right? Um, we see it a lot in our Steel Fusion um, uh, collateral. Um, for us, we've been rethinking from the top down, applications, users, sites, services, What's the way that IT architects and business wants to experience delivering applications to the edge? And at the same time, we've been building a set of services that are needed to support the types of policies and priorities of delivering those applications, right? Path selection, web proxy being one of the newer ones that we just added. And we're really rethinking at the end of the day how this should all come together. So we're starting from the top down. And it's very similar to the way that you know, Apple, when they came with the iPhone, one analogy that seems to stick is this idea that it's hard to imagine, but before this device, 
when you were dealing with voicemail, you were dialing, you know, two to go forward and three to go back and seven to erase, and you actually didn't know exactly who the voicemail was from until you got to that one and it said voice message from, you know, phone number, blah. And so this whole, this whole experience of visual voicemail that they brought was because they were thinking with the, the, the end user experience in mind and contacts was an important primitive that they wanted to have end to end into the service providers network that was actually storing those voice messages. So that's the same sort of analogy when we think about applications and application groups. We want to make sure that those services um, are plumbed in the right way to support those policies of those applications and it's not a bunch of discrete parts that are sort of, uh, I, I, I pause use the pun, but sort of glued together. Um, so, here's an analogy. Car analogies are also popular within, within Riverbed. Um, this is not what we're building, and I understand y'all were uh, having the good opportunity to drive around in something like this, <laughs> and it was probably really fun. This, this has a ton of bells and whistles, right? Um, it's very large, you can do lots of stuff with it, um, but you might also call it over-engineered, and it really isn't very agile, right? And so, for us, this is why the, the, the traditional branch router doesn't really work. You know, try parking this, and imagine if you all had to drive one of these to get from where you were to where you were going today. It just wouldn't work. Where would you park, etc. You can't. It's not very agile. Now, when you look at the um, the pure the the SD WAN pure plays um, that are emerging, it's more like a more like this a Nissan Leaf, right? Which is awesome, right? These are the, they, the Nissan has rethought you know how cars should be built from the from the ground up in terms of like what's the energy that you're using to actually create motion you know and go from point A to point B it's a complete rethink of how do you get from point A to point B not just a new spin on cars right um, and so these are the SD-WAN pure plays and and um, we think it's very interesting technology but I, we think at the end of the day we want to make sure that we're solving a broad set of problems that that relates to applications of all types at the branch. And so this is our approach. We want to be able to not just disrupt what's going on in the wide area network in a software defined way, but just like I described for even those branch local applications, the ability to embrace all of that and really turn branch IT from the 1990s into a new experience, a complete hyper-converged solution that promotes application delivery of all types as needed. And so the, the, the one on the left is the X series that Tesla is going to be bringing out next year. Obviously the S series is the most popular. Uh, this would be akin to our steelhead. This would be akin to our steel fusion appliance that can run additional virtual machines. Um, and then this one here is the Roadster, which is the first one they brought out, but this is, this is the new platform that we're bringing out. It's the equivalent to the Roadster in this picture. And we call it Project Tiger. And I'd like to bring up Kevin Glavin, who's going to talk us through some of the architecture and decisions and thought process that we have in building this new platform that we're bringing out uh, next year. Thanks, Josh. <clears throat> As mentioned in the, um, in the lead up to this, that we're very focused on an application centric policy across the whole enterprise. Um, again, with the, the, the car analogy, uh, the steel fusion, steel head, we're covering part of the enterprise, but there was a hole in the offering in terms of being able to offer a ubiquitous solution, both in terms of having uh, enterprise wide uh, application policy and also enterprise wide visibility. So one of the things that we considered was the need for a, another, uh, another um, platform here that would give us this ubiquitous footprint. And this is where Project Tiger is coming from. What we've actually done with this is attempted to look at um, some of the, uh, the newer technologies and newer mechanisms and build those in to this pl first platform as a way of uh, evolving our, our whole view of, of, of the world. So some of the things that are being shown here are the fact that modularity and containerization as well as service chaining are key design uh, premises of what we're doing. The, um, the idea here is that from the modularity and, and uh, containerization perspective, that helps us both internally, but also gives us a platform that allows for the integration of third, third party services as we're going there. Um, so the idea being that uh, you can have situations where somebody wants 
a uh, specific IPS, a specific firewall, some other service involved in the, in the environment. So having the ability to chain this into this environment is a key idea of what we're doing. Um, we've done some work, uh, example, in chaining in terms of cloud chaining of Zscaler into these environments as an off uh, a cloud version of this, but there is also a need for having a platform that allows for some of this to happen um, on, on a premise device. Um, so uh, as shown here, the, what we're showing is the idea that we have um, the services that we currently have offered in Steelhead, the application intelligence, the path selection, uh, secure transport, QoS, but in, as well as that, we're showing the fact that if you want, there is an opportunity to run this where it is doing the basic layer tree services that are needed in most places, but do they merit the deployment of that Hummer to get those basic services? And what we're saying is that we're going to wrap those in as being available in, in that, that solution as well. Um, there is another mode of operation that is more, trans is more uh, with our traditional deployment of Steelhead where it can still operate as a, a transparent bridge if you either want a, uh, a brownfield type of transition uh, instead of just a pure greenfield plug-in there. Um, then to round out this picture, what we're adding to this is this idea that there is a need for um, a, uh, embracing the SD aspects of the SD-WAN story in the sense of having centralized control uh, made up of both management and a logically distributed control plane. Um, there is the, the fact of you know, the zero touch provisioning, uh, having a place to create that global policy and then push it to the devices, as well as the very important uh, feedback loop there of the telemetry that we're gathering um, in the, the end pla edge platforms using the performance management tools we have to provide us with this complete closed loop so you get a, a you know, closed loop operation of the system rather than just being policy push and nothing more going on there. And I'll leave Josh finish off with this. You can stay up in case there's yeah. questions too. So, so that's, a, that's a preview. So we're coming out with a new platform and for the first time you won't need to have a router um, in the sites that are using this platform. It'll have the native um, IP services built into it. And of course that's been the last step for us. It's not where, where we chose to start in creating a software defined you know, packet delivery network. It's more about creating a software defined application delivery network or software defined business. And so we've been eating from the, uh, from the top down in terms of the problem set. And so this becomes the family photo uh, once we reach uh, launch uh, Tiger uh, next year. That's the, that's the code name for the project. Um, Steel Fusion, you know, the ability to transform branch local applications, get data out of the branch, get data in the data center where it belongs without compromising performance or availability of consuming that data. The ability to boot virtual machines <coughs> created in the data center at those remote sites. The steelhead, of course, we know and love. WAN optimization, uh, we know this market. Uh, if you need WAN optimization, this is the appliance for you um, in those branch sites. So this is gonna be your higher, high, more expensive links or lower bandwidth um, whenever you're trying to save the cost or you're dealing with chatty applications. If, if this is a site where um, you're not dealing with the problems of chatty applications or, or limited bandwidth, then this is, the, this is the offering that rounds it out to provide uh, ubiquitous footprint for the Steelhead network in each and every one of the branch locations, and this will be uh, the one that um, uh, is running on SteelOS, the, the new platform that we'll be, inter be introducing. And of course, all of these are, are managed and monitored through uh, central management out of the data center, and they interoperate together um, um, to create a complete uh, uh, experience of application performance. So that rounds out uh, the agenda for today. Um, we have a question. I have a question about Tiger. Does it run a routing protocol? Yes, yes. The idea is BGP or OSPF are the two we're targeting to start with. Uh, the idea is that you want to be able to connect to, say, the customer edge devices, the CP devices, offering, say, the traditional MPLS. So you will need to actually um, interact with those to, uh, to, to have branch routing services. So a few of us couldn't help but notice that uh, within Tiger, the various components are containerized. Uh, is that something that customers have access to? Could I, uh, you know, meaningfully so, so throw an agent in there of some kind? At the moment, the containerization is something that we're building with the aim that, uh, yes, as a third party, you know, as this evolves, the idea is that third party integration 
not being done by us would be possible with containerization. Cool. And it's the plumbing that we've built our, our, our native services on as well, which is sort of important to be flexible when you're kind of changing policies and, and you know, rerouting them to different services as needed. Um, it's a much more agile framework to work with. Yep. So if I wanted WAN optimization and to put a branch, that same branch into an SD-WAN network, I would need both appliances? Well, no. Today, so with Steelhead, um, through, through what we deliver with pass selection, QoS, the centralized application policies, um, it really is a software-defined WAN. Okay. The piece that we just haven't introduced with Steelhead is the ability to also give you the opportunity to, limit, you know, to, to eliminate the need for a router if necessary. Tiger's really the unique one to do that in, uh, in its first release. Yeah. So you're, with the um, SSL support for as many sessions as the box can do with HTTP, are you doing that in software, or have you put a, an ASIC on there, you know, a Cavium or something to accelerate? Or Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, so on our larger appliances, the data center boxes, um, there is, uh, and I think the largest appliance, the 70 series, mm -hmm. um, there is offload capability in there to support ex um, data compression, and those cards also have support for uh, encryption. Um, we haven't yet integrated that encryption capability on those cards into the runtime of Rios, mm -hmm. uh, but the hardware is there. On the mid-range and the, uh, the low end, it's all commodity. It's fast CPUs, and these things are well over uh, provisioned to support all this. Thank you. You also have a smaller appliance, say if you have thousands of sites and you want to deploy an SD-WAN solution. Mm -hmm. So is there a small appliance that's going to be running SteelOS that would be a part of this? So that is Tiger. Tiger. That is Tiger. That is Tiger right there. Um, so we haven't announced sort of the specs and the prices of this, but uh, not needing to support WAN optimization in this particular packaging and offering, you don't necessarily need you know, the SSDs that go into these boxes. Um, you can support you know, much higher throughputs because you're just working with delivering packets in an agile way. Uh, but that's the box. So more to be coming in terms of the, the, the pricing and specs.